You know, before I built this grow room, I had a good idea of how I wanted it to look and function. But the more I've grown in it, I found that what I wanted to do and what it actually does are two different things. And I've had to make changes. These are just problems you have to learn to solve. How do you keep the temperature down, the humidity down? How do you increase airflow? There's some problems you like to change that maybe you can't. Like for me, it's these lights. I wish I didn't need them. I always have to go under them to harvest. I actually just made this large reflective wall to hopefully encase it in, but then it increases temperature over here a little too high. You know, the point is that you should be asking, especially if you're a commercial operation, how do I make things more efficient? How do I decrease costs, improve quality? How do you make your job easier? And as I've just taken down all the towers for a cleaning, I'm about to make five key improvements again, and I wanna share with you what those are, so hopefully it inspires you to find ways that you can improve your growth space as well. Now the first key change that I'm making is to replace and improve my AC unit. I don't want my grow room any higher than 75 degrees. And right now I'm using this small Medea window AC, which has done the job, but sometimes it pushes it and I don't like that. It doesn't really have a good way to seal it into the window. This thing keeps falling down over it, which is annoying. It's also only blowing out on this side. And I have two towers here, which I can see affects the growth of the pots closest to it, just being blasted with cold air. So instead, I'm finally going to replace it with this Conway portable air conditioner. I'm probably gonna do a separate product review video about this because it does have some nice features. But the long story short is that it's going to get it away from those towers, it's gonna to blow down the middle, disperse the air more evenly, and it's more powerful. Overall, it's a strong improvement and should allow me to control the temperature of my grow room better. All right, the second thing I'm going to improve is the organization of my power cords. As you can see, all my cords sort of converge at this outlet and I've done some things to improve this already. I've wrapped up the cord so that there's no excess length on the floor. I've set everything on this plastic tray so if there's any water, it can't come and hit or damage or start a fire. But I still think it's too exposed. And it's honestly an eyesore too and difficult to maneuver around when I'm in the towers over here. So I've been brainstorming ways to improve this and here's what I've come up with. These are fast track rails and they're made to hold cords or hoses. They can be clipped onto many surfaces, or in this case, I'm going to drill them into the wall. And I'm gonna take the cords, wrap them around it, which should get rid of even some of the extra excess. It's going to lift it off the ground, which will also make this area safer and easier to maneuver around. And I also think it's gonna be more aesthetically pleasing to see being wrapped up here on the wall instead of sort of sprawled on the ground here. Much better, much, much, much better. All right, the third thing I'm going to improve is my utilization of space. So recently I've been filling up every nook and cranny with all types of plants I can get my hands on. I had like four different types of fruiting bushes in here. This is a hanging strawberry planter. And the truth is it was a little much. It was a lot to work around. I was constantly having to move things to access places. And in this case, the strawberries is really inconvenient in terms of trying to water it. And I did pull some strawberries off this, but I couldn't give it the love it deserves. So I'm going to pull this off, move it somewhere better, probably outside. And I'm going to utilize my space better by using less of it at this point. So let's see go. The next way I'm stepping it up is by improving the placement of the actual growing systems. The last point was more about negative space. All the nooks and crannies I wasn't really using anyways, where in this point, it's about the positive space. Where am I actually gonna put the growing systems and in what formation and why? And it's really good to think about, what am I growing in these systems? Where is it gonna be easiest for me to access, to harvest? When you keep these things in mind and begin experimenting yourself, 
you're going to figure out the absolute best placement and it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. I've tried a few different ways in this grow room. In fact, when I first started, I fit 10 towers in here. Now I'm down to eight and I'm even considering going to seven. When I started, I also had my spinach towers right here front and center, but then I moved both of them here to this corner of the grow room. And you know, I found that it's actually easier in this space. I mean, there's hundreds of spinach leaves that I'm trying to get into and cut off. So those towers, I need to give more space to. Things that make my life easier and make me far more efficient with my time really come full circle and it just improves really everything that you do. All right, the last thing I'm doing to improve my farm going forward is to better utilize the growing technology I have, starting with these lights. You know, the truth is everything that I use, the towers, the microgreen racks, these lights, I'm learning how to utilize better. And it's easy to think of improvement in terms of getting something more or new, when maybe the best way you can improve your setup is just by learning how to utilize what you already have better. When you first turn these lights on, this is more of a white full spectrum light. And this is what fresh plants just transplanted need. And what I tend to do is crank this sucker all the way up where the red strips of light become stronger, giving the plant more red wavelengths, which are good during the fruiting and blooming stages. You see, when I transplant the newbies, they can't really utilize all the redder wavelengths this puts out until later, but I kind of just throw them on at the beginning. And I've just seen that it doesn't really make a difference. So why am I going to draw more energy, put out more power, when the plants really don't need it. That's not efficient. That's not a best use of energy. So instead, when I go to transplant all the fresh ones that I have ready to refill up this farm, I'm going to keep these lights nice and low. Well, that's what I wanted to leave you with. Across the spectrum, you wanna be identifying problems, finding solutions, and looking for ways to improve your indoor farm. And I hope me showing my experience has inspired you and helps you along in your journey. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.